folks. Uh, there was a little bit of video ahead of this one uh, that I uploaded as part of uh, another video called um, uh, Day in the Life of a Guitar Making Geek. Uh, and all I showed was the glue up of this blank. Uh, that was the first thing in that video. Uh, this is the official start video, I guess, of the Zacco caster. It's uh, a custom Stratocaster. Um, custom is kind of redundant. Everything I do is like a one-off. Uh, so it is a Stratocaster built to uh, this customer's spec. And this customer is Zach. So I don't I hope he doesn't have a problem with me sharing that. I think that's fine. I think he's trying to go through life anonymously. Um, I had I had kind of wide wide boards here, uh, as you can tell here, wherever the saw cut is or it is. Uh, so I went ahead and ran them through the saw first. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see the point in having this just end up being a part of the radius cutoff here. So uh, there they are. So they might be something in the future. I'm not sure what, but it might be nothing more than uh, kindling for my neighbor's fireplace. I don't know. But um, so pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the body the way it is, the blank the way it is. I'm going to trace it. I'll um, I'll outline some things here and do routing on the top um, and let's have a look here. I don't have anything on here that is um, is bad. I like that we've got some figure in the wood here. Uh, the the part of this you're going to actually see, which is like here, um, is actually very evenly matched. And we just swung the board around. So basically what you had was this piece of wood right here. And I, exp I don't know that I explained it, but I showed the process in the other video. But uh, this, this was one board. I cut the board off and swung it around and edged these two sides, this one side it became. So basically whatever the grain is doing right here, it's pretty much going to be doing right here unless it's just crazy. And, uh, and it swung it around. It almost looks book matched in that regard. Obviously, as you get farther out, it doesn't look book matched. Um, on a Stratocaster, especially, you're, you don't see much of this. This is all under a pick guard here, you know, out, out to here anyway. And like so, and then up around this area. So you don't see much there. You will see this uh, little eyeball right there. Um, I think just add some interest to that thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and trace around this. This is my, um, oh, where is it going to end up at? It's, it's just barely in there. All right. So it's, um, Oh, center line. Center line is king, okay? Anytime you're building a guitar, uh, anytime, you're, I was going to say especially from templates, but anytime, you always need a center line reference. So even if this was a one piece blank, you would find a center and create a center line. And even if it was based on nothing other than just where you wanted to put the center line, you got to have it. Because everything you do goes back to. Uh, that's kind of your datum, your base point. Everything goes back to that point. So you're always putting everything down based on your center line. Now, I have a, I have a, a mush on the edge of my template there. This is just really, at this point, a tracing template because I've made others uh, from here. I, uh, I should do that. I generally do this with a Sharpie. Um, and then when I'm cutting band sawing things out, 
Uh, even if you nick the Sharpie, you still have plenty of, of meat before you're in trouble as far as going too deep into the line. Um, you can also do that with a pencil line and just be careful, right? Uh, all right, so there we have center, uh, center line. We have that. I also have a center line on the back. Uh, this center line happens to be based on the joint in the middle. I've had to uh, kind of revamp this template a little bit. It was a little, a little not perfect um, when I got it, and so I uh, this this template is made from that template. I don't know if you can see it or not in the thing. I've had to I had to add some meat back into the pocket right here. Oh, you can't see that. Which way do I need to go? Yep, uh, this, uh, my prototype uh, Paisley Telecaster doesn't have enough meat right here, so it barely caught, so I added some, some wood in here and rerouted that. I also had to uh, take a little more meat between here and the neck pocket because the pick guard uh, wasn't going up far enough, so they missed a little bit there. Um, so anyway... This has been re revamped, so it's the good, the good one. All right, so we'll get that set up, and we just flush it. I also trimmed it right here on the end, so that I can just line it up with the with the mark here. This is, uh, of course, until you actually route it, it's. It's just roughed, roughed out. Um, now you have uh, varying points here too along the line. This is as good a place as any to talk about it, I suppose. Neck pocket is five eighths deep. I think that your uh, your pickup pockets. I think stock those are five eighths. I'm going to go three quarter. Uh, it doesn't hurt to go deeper and it doesn't hurt to get some of the weight out of the body. Although this shouldn't be a heavy body. This is a just regular old alder. Uh, shouldn't be terribly heavy. I won't know until I get it cut out. Um, I guess I could weigh the blank just for kicks and giggles. Um, anyway, so we're pretty much there. Okay. And then this, these pockets, I take these down to uh, we've got inch and three quarter body thickness. I'll take these down to about an inch and a half um, or inch and a quarter, and I'll double check on that. Uh, I don't remember right off the top of my head what the stock kind of uh, idea is here. Also, uh, I could make a little a little piece to go in here to control my router so that it doesn't come. I don't do that. Um, I just don't route the part I don't want deeper. And uh, it's in the bottom of the control cavity. It's, if I miss a little bit, um, I will be forgiven. So I'm just tracing all this stuff because I'm going to do some uh, pre-drilling pre in these areas to remove some of the material. Okay, there we have it. Got everything outlined there. So that's what that looks like. And put this, put that template away from me. I'm gonna to go to the drill press and I'm gonna hog these out. Okay. This is where you get to visualize me hogging these out on the drill press with a Forstner bit. Um, mm -hmm. I will set, I will set my depths as such. I will be shorter than what I want to actually route out, but you can just imagine we're going to go five eighths on one of them, three quarters on the next one, and then all but about a quarter of an inch to the back on the last one. So, uh, and I did all that where you couldn't see it. I just wrote on the edge of the blank there. Okay. Very handy. Great, 
great film skills. Okay, so back from the drill press. Uh, basically, I set it so that the point on the Forgener bit doesn't exceed my my depth. And uh, I left some question as to whether or not I was going to go down an inch and a quarter or go down an inch and a half, which would be an inch, a quarter inch from the back. I want an inch and a half because I, uh, I have my switch already and I had another... Uh, actually, Telecaster style uh, five-way switch that I'm using on the the thousand-dollar guitar, and that's going to be uh, it, it needed an inch and a half to have any kind of clearance. If you uh, if you shield your cavities, and then you you get your switch too close, uh, you end up shorting things out. So it's just better to just go deeper. And a quarter inch is uh, not. Uh, outrageous, thin wise or anything, and uh, that's what we did. So now I'm going to put my template on here somewhere. So you see this? This was old residue from the super glue masking tape trick. I don't know. Uh, something happened, obviously. Oh, we're just going to do this trick. It's called a uh, two-way tape or double stick tape or something along those lines and it's wonderful. Groovy stuff. And every time I use this I say I don't remember uh, who the manufacturer or the supplier was. Actually I looked at it and it's IPG. It's the manufacturer. Uh, let me, I have, I have a second roll hanging out right here. And then, so that is who I got it from. Taylor Tool Works. Uh, they're in the computer. I'm just thinking this is as good a time as any to show you all the Stratocaster bodies I have here. So, these two are obviously farther along. And then there's these two pine body, and I got another pine body floating around here somewhere. Oh, there it is, it's under stuff. But yeah, take my word for it, I got another pine body, but I got stuff on it. So those are the strats. Three pine bodies, a maple burl with uh, mahogany on the back, and then this uh, paisley print, uh, both sides. Gonna get some sort of edge treatment. Um, on that, these are these are all available except for the Zacco caster, um, and I have uh, I have an L LPJ body in mahogany that's uh, that's uh, I was planning on it being TV TV yellow. Uh, we'll see what happens to that. Got all these, all these things. I start as specs, and they become backburnered when I have uh, other stuff pressing. And usually it's repairs, but this time it's a couple builds. That's backburner and everything, which I'm perfectly happy about. All right. So now that I showed that off. Let's just get, get to the main event here. Just zippy. Thought about figuring out ways to screw this down, but you know, there's really no need. Um, I could do it with the screws under the pick guard and it would all be good, but um, for what I'm doing right now, it's not that uh, critical. Uh, I mean, it's critical, but it's not like I'm going to jerk this template off of here, hand routing uh, this body. Get the debris out. The trick, of course, is to get yourself lined up on your lines. That's redundant. On your lines and uh, 
both the center line and the butt line here, which isn't really established at this point, so it doesn't really matter if I'm there 100%, as long as I don't, um, as long as I haven't drilled anywhere where I'm going to have an issue and I have not. So, double checking my center line. I look really good on my center lines. Yeah. Happy guy. And that should probably be enough. Uh, what I usually do is take a little squeezy clamp and just make sure I have good contact, but I have good contact. I also at times just take hammers and bang them down just to make sure that I got plenty of surface contact. But uh, I am going to squeezy clamp it. That's so well, actually, I could even clamp it down to the bench if I were if I were worried that something was going to happen. Well, I should clamp it to the bench anyway. Oh, my clamp isn't long enough. Clamp it down to the edge of the bench so that I don't have any anything wandering away from me. I don't have to have it clamped to hold the template down, but that doesn't hurt either. As long as I don't have anything in the way of my my router, we're all good. Never hurts to clamp stuff down a little bit. Uh, and I got this mat under here, which is just making it weird. Okay, so here we go. Got set up. Uh, got this dust collector hood clamped on here. Uh, it's not great, but it's better than nothing. Uh, goes to my big grizzly dust collector. It's just this distance doesn't doesn't suck it in very well. Um, got uh, got my got a pretty short little cutter on this thing. Um, it's only about a half five six five eighths long. Um, just fine. I uh, just get started around here because the next size cutter I have uh, really just takes off too much material first go around even even with the three-quarter inch template that's got me taking off you know a half to five eighths deep there and I don't want to do that um, so here we go dust collector on I'll uh, I'll play some music here I broke a cardinal rule I uh, I got going without my ear protection here. So I'm going to put this longer uh, router bit in and uh, carry on to my uh, to my final depths. I uh, don't believe you need to see that, right? All right. So at this point, I'm down to three quarters, five eighths here in the neck pocket, three quarter in the pickups, and uh, three quarter everywhere else for that matter. But I'm going to go uh, all the way to inch and a half here. So I have another three quarters to go over here. Well. Uh, rather than put a longer bit in, uh, this time just to take the take the template off, and um, then we just use the existing channel as the router template. So there we go. All right, here we go. Taking about a three three sixteenths depth of cut here, and uh, yeah. Like that, the whole the whole thing, the whole thing's coming down three sixty. I think the whole thing down to five eighths, and then this portion right here goes all the way down through to a quarter inch from the top. All right, so you're watching another episode of uh, Stupid Is as Stupid Does. Uh, it's not really that bad. I'm just sitting here scratching my head going like, I don't understand why I can't get down there deep enough to get that shelf down to a quarter of an inch and this is the longest bit I have. Well, I still have the template on here. 
dummy. Um, so that's that's all that's happening. Nothing terrible. Uh, so let me pull this up. There we go. Well, I got my center line and my other lines kind of agreeing with each other, so I'm going to say that I'm probably pretty good there. I'm uh, looking at my trim route for my my line there. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that pretty happy, unless something doesn't feel right or look right. Um, Can feel pretty all right with this stuff. I would say we're good. All right, um, so do my standard squeezy clamp thing. And uh, make sure that I pressure on all the points that I have tape on. Gonna head over to the router. So, real quick discussion on router direction. This router bit is going to rotate this direction into this sharp edge here. When you go up against grain, it's possible that you might get some chipping down grain, not so much. I haven't really had a problem with this cutter, not had a problem with this cutter, but there are a couple places where I may go ahead and uh, climb cut a little bit, although it's a big cutter and that is uh, a little on the risky side with a larger cutter. So we'll see what happens. Okey-doke, that looks like it. 
Uh, peel this thing apart, see what we get. What we got, get, got, okay. <laughs> 